So, as it turns out, our favorite TikTok sensation, sock philanthropist, pelican aficionado, science daddy, Hank Green, has officially come out as bi. Again? 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 Before we dive into it, my name is Evelyn. I am the internet's favorite bi big sister. I am also an intimacy coordinator for film and television. And so if you like bisexuality and or queer media analysis, you should go ahead and pop that subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, and give me a little thumbs up below if you like this kind of content. God, I've become such a YouTuber now. It's so weird. So for any of you that might not know exactly what I'm talking about, Hank officially came out as bi in one of his now infamous late night Twitter binges, where he said, and I quote, in response to a tweet about Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds in Gossip Girl, I'm bi and Ryan is not in my interest house. Is this a known issue? Is he only hot to straights? <laughs> Uh, the internet then proceeded to lose their collective shit. He continued to tweet in response to a reply to that, where Destiny at Destiny A Rios 3 said, I'm a bi woman and Ryan is attractive to me, but not in a romantic way. He's more like a best friend's dad who's always funny and there for you sort of like way, like a second dad. Hank responded, yes, he's definitely a very good looking guy. So just doubling down. The internet immediately descended upon this information in a way that I don't think was all that unpredictable. My personal favorite to come out of this was someone who was apparently one of Hank's uh, readers for one of his books. Um, at Taylor Mankey tweeted, Twitter is surprised to learn that Hank Green is bi, but no one is more surprised than me, a person who Hank Green paid to tell him about what being bi is like for his book. <laughs> Uh, which Hank went on to say, in fairness, I think your lived experience of bisexuality probably has more relevance to the character in question than my experiences, which include watching Wreck-It Ralph cosplay TikToks a little longer than you'd expect and trying to kiss a boy in 1997. I love everything. This saga then concluded with Hank Green tweeting, I'm into big, sweet, nerdy, beardy guys and little funny, nerdy, clean shaven guys. To which a user at Andy Incorporated tweeted, this is just Brennan twice. And Hank responded, please never tell Brennan how hot I think he is. <laughs> this is my favorite day. But all this shock still is a little bit surprising for me because this is not the first time Hank has mentioned that he's not exactly straight at least. Let me take you back to ye old 2020 when we were all baking loaves of bread in our apartment and making frothy coffee and generally living our lives through a screen when Hank posted this video. People are always saying, Hank, hey, you're straight. Why are you so popular on gay TikTok? And I'm like, well, first of all, but second of all, more importantly, look at me. Which then immediately set TikTok entirely into a tizzy. There were remixes, there were all sorts of mashups. But this is the first time I remember Hank Green kind of officially coming out as some sort of queer. There was a certain casualness to this video that I really adored at the time. And that actually brings me back to what I love about what we're currently seeing today with Hank, because after the series of tweets, he finally made a TikTok video in response to it. And this is what he said. I'm trending on Twitter right now because I'm bi, apparently. I mean, I am bi, but apparently that's why. I just don't think that's the most important thing that I do. I think the most important thing that I do actually is a little thing called Crash Course. And right now, and only until June 9th, can you get the 2023 Crash Course coin? I don't think being bi is the most important thing about me. Now, I've also linked the full video below. You should totally go watch it because it shows all of the important things that they're doing with Crash Course and how you can help support that mission and get more educational content to people all over the world, which is just amazing. And this is my point. My entire goal with my content is to make being bi the least important thing that people do. I know that sounds really counterintuitive to all of the branding and the fact that my room is bi colors and this seems to be something that I have decided consciously to make a huge part of my personality. The reason I make this such a huge part of my personality and the reason that I decided to be a very visible bi person is to inundate the world with the idea that this is a completely normal thing to be. I remember one of the hardest things about me coming out was feeling like people were going to stop defining me as Evelyn and start defining me as a queer person. 
And I think this is a very legitimate fear because when people are forced to be othered in society, to be seen as something different and strange and unusual, it creates this idea that that is the most important or interesting thing about you. Whereas I think being queer is about as interesting as having a different color hair. And I think if we start seeing it like that, we will see a lot less of the negative effects of our society on queer people. I'm already seeing it in the 10 years plus that I've been out. Kids so much younger than me are so much more comfortable coming out publicly than I've ever seen before. And so much of that has to do with normalizing the existence of these identities. And so when someone like Hank says, being bi is not the most interesting thing about me, that resonates so deeply with what I want our world to look like for all queer people. I talk about this a lot in my intimacy coordinating work as well, because I really crave telling queer stories in which someone's queerness is just a fact of their life. I think there are still stories to be told about coming out and about the struggle of coming out, but I think the way we're going, we need to see more stories where being queer is just a part of you and not something that needs to be fawned over or made a big stink about or, or wrestled with. It can just exist. We're already seeing great examples of this in media. My personal favorite recently has, of course, been David Rose in Schitt's Creek. I think the way they approach David's character, where his pansexuality is just treated as a thing, as a fact, there is one conversation about it when he needs to clear up the fact that he's not gay with Stevie after having slept with her. Spoiler alert, sorry for guys who haven't seen the show. And then that's it. It's never brought up again. David is never asked to redefine or re-examine his sexuality based on whatever partner he ends up with. And I think that is the whole point, and that is what I crave, and that is why I think the way Hank has talked about this and has handled this is my absolute favorite thing. And plus, as a bonus, I love seeing more buyer men represented. And Hank has established that he still loves his wife. This doesn't change anything. And that's the point. It's just a part of who you are. It does not have to define you, and it shouldn't have to define you unless you want it to. But anyways, that's my thoughts on things. What do you think about this? Were you surprised by him coming out? Were you not surprised? Did it resonate with you? Let me know in the comments below. I love hearing your experiences. And again, if you want more of my thoughts on queer media and bisexuality, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notifications because I'm terrible about telling you guys when I drop new content, and I'll see you on the next one. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba. Bye!